Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Big Talk with Bruce Dickey here on this beautiful Monday morning. It is November 4th. Do appreciate you tuning in each and every day here on uh, Big Talk with Bruce Dickey on Wabash Catch TV. We're kind of into Coaches Week now. I had Phil Lieb uh, the other day. I've got... Uh, I've got uh, Scott and Michael Ravy coming in a few days. Hopefully, uh, still working with another few coaches to get them in here as well. As basketball season is fast approaching, and ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Bowen is here from the Cisney Running Lions, and we're going to talk high school basketball as well as who knows what all kinds of other stuff over the next hour or so. And uh, uh, here on this Monday, November fourth, for, thank you so much for coming in, Kevin. Hey, I appreciate thanks for having it. me. I appreciate it, Bruce. Uh, um, what's going on around the neighborhood? By the way, you're watching over in Salem on Channel 3 here in Flora, Channel 100. All same story down in Sisney and Jeff and uh, over in uh, Albion, West Salem. Now, see, we you play several of the teams that we that will be broadcasting the to these towns to. Yes. You're not are you gonna give up any Not seat? very much. Not very much. <laughs> he's, he says he's not gonna talk at all, folks. Uh, it's, uh, no secrets to be learned today. Uh, but uh, what is going on in the neighborhood? You're off the you're off the screen now, right. so I feel I feel good about yourself. Uh, what is going on community events wise? Well actually not a whole lot of community events today as uh, we're just getting over the big Halloween weekend. It seems like Halloween has uh, stretched into a four or five day event, but uh, that is over now. And uh, we've got uh, over in Fairfield, the Feed My Sheep Soup Kitchen uh, will be uh, sponsoring the class Making Healthier Choices on a Budget. And that's going to start today at uh, 6.30 tonight, actually tonight, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., Justine Barnfield, uh, I believe that's Barney's, uh, Barney and Julie's daughter from Sisney, will uh, teach the class each Monday through December 16th. And if you uh, like any more information, give them a call at 842-3702. It's a, a wonderful class chance for uh, folks to uh, uh, learn how to budget, get uh, get a little bit smarter about your about your money. So then, and, and learn how to budget as well as uh, get uh, better eating habits. There you go. And speaking of better eating habits or maybe uh, worse eating habits, this is National Candy Day. That's maybe not the best uh, item to have for uh, for making healthier choices. Would you say, Kevin? I don't think so. <laughs> so be a bad idea. But National Candy Day uh, hits today. This is uh, the on the first. I believe it's on the first Monday of November. On November fourth, we celebrate the sweet holiday, National Candy Day. Candies have a long history of attracting us with their bright colors and delightful flavors. They also come in a variety, fun sizes and shapes. Candy history. In the late 13th, 13th century, the Middle English first began using the word candy. It was borrowed from the old French Kukre candy and is de derived in turn from uh, the Persian Quand and Quandi cane sugar. I had no idea that uh, candy came from cane sugar. You knew that, though, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. I did. I just came to talk about basketball, boys. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about all kinds of other stuff. We're going to talk about good. Illinois basketball, pro basketball, yeah. uh -huh. football. Uh, oh, you're man. just here to talk about Sisney basketball. Yes. <laughs> I, I know a little bit about that, and that's about it. Well, I, let me tell you a little bit more about candy because <laughs> right, I, 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 I got to burn some time here. Yep, I got to right. burn some time. Right. Uh, sugar wasn't always readily available, so the first candies were made from honey. Candy makers coated the fruits and flowers with honey. This method preserved flowers and nuts or created forms of candy. Today, we still have these confections, but they are typically seen as only a garnish. Originally a form of medicine, candy calmed the digestive system and cooled a sore throat. At the time, combined with spices and sugar, candy only appeared in the purses and the dishes of the wealthy. But by the 18th century, the first candy likely came to America from Britain and France. At the time, people made the simplest form of candy from crystallized sugar or rock candy.
and even the most basic form of sugar was considered a luxury and was only attainable by the wealthy. However, since 1979, the world has produced more sugar than can be sold, making it very available and attainable and very cheap, which makes no sense why it costs you, uh, which makes no sense that it costs you $2 for a candy bar. Yeah, not at all. And, and with Halloween just be ending, you know, yeah. this is, it's ironic that it's november 4th i would think you know i would have we would pushed off a little bit or, or something like that I, I guess maybe they're wanting folks to celebrate with the leftovers the dentist uh, must have something to do with it dentist already had uh, <laughs> friday was national brush day by the there way we go. friday is national <laughs> brush your teeth day this is also uh, color your world orange day the first monday in november dedicated to bring awareness to complex regional pain syndrome and reflex sympathetic dystrophy with color the world orange Orange Day. Uh, symptoms of the uh, vary in severity for these diseases. Symptoms may include uh, pain, uh, uh, well, pain in the uh, stiff and swollen joints, dec decreased mobility, all kinds of other things. But the uh, the color of the world Orange Day in recognition of CTWO. And, and actually, I have never heard of this disease, but I like the uh, I, I like the the picture. Yeah. The picture's nice, That's and good. especially since you're wearing the orange. Well, shirt. you know, I, I knew that was coming. That's you do. You you've been so you've been planning <laughs> on celebrating this for yes, years. I, I know. On. I know that you have. Color the world orange day originally began in the year 2014, so that's cool. What's on Wabash? What do you want to see on television tonight? If you're a big sports fan, last uh, remember last Saturday or last Sunday night we had the the uh, the. Uh, uh, where all the four sports went at the same time, had hockey going, baseball, NFL, and football. Uh, the Equinox, it was the Sports Equinox. Tonight, though, is the Sports Nothing Knox, <laughs> as uh, there are no hockey games on television tonight. There are no basketball games on television tonight. They're playing them, but they're just not on national TV. No College football on television tonight. Baseball ended last week with the Nationals winning the World Series. And there's only NFL football tonight. The Dallas Cowboys are in New York to take on the Giants. That'll be tonight on ESPN, which is Channel 601. My guest today, again, is Kevin Bowen. We are going to talk about Sisney basketball as well as whatever else pops up. You are watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right here on Wabash Catch TV. Be back with Kevin. Kevin, right there, right after this. Do stick around. Looking to build a new hobby building, horse barn, or farm shop? Let Morton Buildings help you design and construct a building that perfectly suits your needs. We'll be there for you every step of the way, even post-construction, with the strongest non-prorated warranty in the industry. Plus, Morton's exclusive Energy Performer Insulation System provides the ultimate in comfort and efficiency. To see our latest projects and learn more, please visit mortonbuildings.com. At Wabash Communications, our goal is simple, to keep people connected. And today we are doing just that, better than ever, by delivering the latest technology and personal service only a local provider can offer. We offer services anywhere from fast, reliable internet, TV services, and home monitoring solutions to crystal clear local and long distance phone service. Wabash continues the commitment we started back in 1952, delivering a great connection to the most important people we know, our customers. So choose Wabash, the local service from people you can trust. When you want an honest deal and hometown service without the runaround, go to LeMond Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. LeMond's always inspects your battery, antifreeze wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at Bruce D at Wabash.net if you are a 
member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Hey, thanks for watching. Get what you want and nothing else when you order a la carte internet from Wabash Communications. Wabash Communications is now able to offer a la carte internet called broadband only with fast download and upload speeds, reliable service, and unlimited data usage. No phone service is required for our broadband only plans. Our broadband only menu includes packages up to one gig download. Call us at 665-3311 now to order. Service availability and internet speed will depend on location. Contact us for details. Morning, folks. Welcome back. Big talk with Bruce Dickey here on Wabash Catch TV. My guest today is Kevin Bowen. I'm going to switch over to that camera, Kevin. Right. As uh, we are going to talk about Sisney basketball, probably also talk about uh, you. You uh, pay attention to uh, your Illinois fan or who you? I, I like Illinois. Yeah. Uh, the, by the way, I, I bring that up to everybody I because know. because they're going to be in the tournament. This is our year. Uh, let's hope so. To at least get back. <laughs> This is our year to at least get back. Uh, Kevin is the Sisney High School basketball coach, and uh, last year, the uh, last year was kind of a, a of an odd year for the running lines. A year of change. You didn't have a whole lot of uh, uh, of age and experience. Your kids got a lot of age and experience, but you still don't have a lot of age yet, do you? No, we're still going to be you know fairly young. Uh, we don't have a lot of seniors. Uh, you know, last year we were freshmen and sophomores. This yeah. year we were sophomore juniors. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you have some maturity in bodies. You know, that sophomore to junior year is what I've seen a big maturity, which is you know you start putting on some weight a little bit. Um, where these were little bitty skinny freshmen and sophomores. That's 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 a change that uh, at, at this time. So uh, hopefully we're not doing the same things. Yeah. You know that we were doing last year you, you, you hopefully the kids will have learned uh, something yeah. over the course yeah. of the uh last year you lost uh, a few seniors the role players malcolm levi and i'm trying to remember uh, austin drake yeah uh, in klingler uh dalton miller all four seniors that uh are, are not playing obviously they graduated going on to bigger and better things yeah and, yeah and we wish them well uh and ian going i know ian's going over to uh, uh wabash yeah. valley right yeah he is he's, he's in radio and television yeah, Where, what are the other boys doing uh malcolm is uh in the military, uh, Dalton's going to school, and so is Austin. Oh, was that right? Where are those boys going? Uh, I believe Wabash and Frontier. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question I may not have intended to ask. Over the course of time, you've been a principal in addition to college, the college high school basketball coach for several years. Yeah. Um, as the kids graduate and i'm asking you about four seniors on your basketball yeah. team that have graduated in the last year as a principal i'm presuming that you kind of keep an eye on uh, what the entire class not just your basketball team has done right. what, what the, the group of 30 kids uh because they're gonna be 30 or 40 kids in each class 20 to yeah. 30 kids yeah. in each class how difficult is it do you keep an eye on that very closely or is it just something you pay attention to off off, off or you, you kind of how far out and you've been principal now for eight years eight years uh, let's let's say give or so <laughs> give or take how far out of out of high school is a kid before you really don't pay? Well, they're doing well. They don't need me to pay attention anymore. Well, I don't think you ever really not pay attention. It's just you have more and more spots that are being filled by kids that are graduating. So, you know, you just lose track of, of some kids. Uh, but, you know, we try to track them a few years out of high school. Just Do you? To, just to kind of see, you know, how things are going and, uh, you know. I never, I didn't realize that. I, I didn't know that yeah, well, high some, schools it, do that. It, it's some, you find out where they're going and then you yeah. kind of, you get some feedback, especially in the, the junior colleges are really good about that. Really? Um, yeah. You can, you can get that information. That, that kind of see how no kidding. Doing. Well, that, that must, does it make you, I, I, I guess you'll, you'll have your occasional surprises, uh, yeah. kids who maybe do better or maybe not as well as you'd expect right. it. And you'll have uh, the, 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 the occasional kid that you think, well, you know, they're just going to be a star. And they, they continue to be a star. How how often are you surprised? Oh, now that you've been doing it for seven or eight years, I don't know that I'm really surprised a lot because I feel like when they leave, we have a pretty good handle of where they are. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I, I guess the longer you're in business, yeah. you just kind of there's fewer and fewer surprises. You get that you get, you get an idea yeah. what of what to expect. You see what their what their motivation, their drive is because when they leave high school. 
you know, high school, they have to take this, 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 and this. But when they leave, they're going into something they want to do. They're right. Pursuing a career. So, you know, if you get them in a spot where they, they're going to be successful and have the confidence, and then they're going on to what they want to do. So, you know, I think you have them ready to go. What kind of portion of kids do you think? Uh, uh, this is Kevin Bowen. He's a principal as well as a high school basketball. We're going to talk basketball, I'm telling you. What kind of portion of kids do you think know what, they're, what they want to do when they leave high school? Oh, I tell you did what. Did you? You know, yes and no. I thought I did yeah. until my freshman year. Really? And then, you know, I was going to be an accountant, CPA. I wanted to do that. My dad did that. Yeah. And, and then I realized that I don't want to do this. Yeah. It's not uh, for me. I got an education, and kind of that was my route after that. Um, I think a lot of kids, you know, we, we do some prep with trying to work with them. Hey, you got to start thinking about this. Start thinking about this. And I think that happens now more than it used to when I was in high school. Really? I don't remember... Uh, being hit up with what I wanted to do out of high school. You know, maybe my junior, senior year, but, you know, we start trying to push it freshman, sophomore year, just, you know, having discussions and talking about it in class. And Do you uh, really? And, and then, you know, our junior that's, year. That's, that's really cool because we didn't do it either. Right. It, it just, I mean, I was, I'm a little older than you, 10, yeah. 15 years older than you. Well, not 15. <laughs> I'm a little older than you, but we we never had discussions. And basically, when I was in high school, they, what do you want to do after? I, well, I want to go to Illinois. You know, and, and and that was it. And after that, they okay, go. Our juniors and my my daughter's a junior this year, uh, but you know, the portion of their uh, with a careers class is they do research and and they research a job. They research what it takes to, to obtain that job, the education, and then they look at schools that would best suit their professional career goals. So, uh, so it's so it starts the discussions. Then start as the kids a junior, as the kids a right. sophomore, as well, the kids a freshman. It's, it's starting, you know, probably not as structured as what it is their junior year. Yeah. The junior year gets really structured. Is that uh, right? Uh, so it's. It's a great opportunity for our, for our kids to kind of, and, you know, we're not saying that, hey, you're going to know exactly, but you're going to have an area maybe that you want to be in. Yeah. And that's that's what we're wanting to have is just to continue to narrow that down. So when you're senior, you, you know, have a good idea. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of come to uh, my daughter has really narrowed it down. It's, well, it's coming it's it's yeah, coming it's, home it is. to you. It is. What she so, want to do? Uh, she wants to be a speech path. All right, so she wants to be a speech path now. Mm -hmm. Whenever she gets to be a freshman in college like you were, when you decided <laughs> that you weren't going to be an accountant, yeah. you were going to be a, an educator uh, or a teacher, or uh, 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 you didn't even think to be a coach when yeah. you were in college, did you? Well, yes, that, that's kind of what... That's what you pushed know, I, you in the other direction? I was helping the basketball camps the whole time. And, With Coach Creel. Yeah. Doug Creel, um, Mount Vernon. And so, you know, that was something I knew I wanted to do, uh, you know, I thought. Uh, and then I knew, being an accountant, that that was going to be an option. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, that's kind of what pushed me uh, that direction. Well, that's fascinating. All right, I took I I, I, I took us entirely off subject. Well, but uh, but I, that's fascinating to me. All right, so. You lost four, four kids from last year's squad. Yeah. How do you go about? I mean, you know, granted, it's a uh, it's an aging process. Kids are going to get it. Kids get better. Kids get uh, get worse. How do you go about uh, filling the holes that because these were role players? They had holes to fill. They had places to play right. for the team. Yeah. You just find somebody younger to try to teach them up, huh? Yeah, and you know we've got I've got four, you know four about four guys that I'm looking at. Filling in those those yeah. roles, uh, and you know, I'm not saying that, that may not be the other role. They may move into a starting position. Right. You never know. Yeah. But I've got uh, four kids. I think that uh, I'm confident that they're going to be able to uh, fulfill some roles and and buy into that. And, and that's what I think is is difficult sometimes for kids to understand that you know not everyone's going to score 15 and get 10. Right. Uh, you know, there's a role for us to be successful, for yeah. Disney basketball to be successful. Right. We need you to fulfill this role. And I've been fortunate, uh, you know, to work with great kids that have accepted that. They may not have liked it all the time, but they accepted it. You know, they wanted playing time that they were going to accept that role. And, and uh, you know, I look forward to having that same opportunity this year with, with kids in those spots. How many years have you been coaching now in total? Because you uh, took a few years out. Well, five years off. Uh, I think this is my... Tenth year, I think it's no kidding. I think, I think that's right. I, this Kevin, you are so probably, old. I, I'm forty, gonna be forty-four. Are you really? Yeah. 
Yeah. You are. Uh, I'm getting you there. aren't ten years younger than me. You're close. Yeah. <laughs> <No>, it's a <laughs> uh, man. It, it happens quickly. I can't believe it. And I, I struggle to remember how long I've been here. Do you really? It's just, yeah. It's. Uh, I should know that, but it just it doesn't seem like I've been. Well, here you've been a Sisney for oh three was my first year there. Wow, time flies. All right, all right. Now we're gonna we're gonna go take a commercial break and cry for a while while we remember how young we used to be. <laughs> <laughs> the way we're gonna sing the way we were here in just a few minutes. Uh, that's Kevin Bowen, not Bruce Dickey. We're talking high, we're talking Sisney High School basketball, and uh, you're watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right here on Wabash Catch TV. Back in a sec. At Wabash Communications, our goal is simple, to keep people connected. And today we are doing just that, better than ever, by delivering the latest technology and personal service only a local provider can offer. We offer services anywhere from fast, reliable internet, TV services, and home monitoring solutions to crystal clear local and long distance phone service. Wabash continues the commitment we started back in 1952, delivering a great connection to the most important people we know, our customers. So choose Wabash, the local service from people you can trust. In 1949, Morton Buildings constructed our first machine storage building to establish our bond with the farming community. Since then, our relationship has grown, and so have our product offerings. From the smallest specialized operation to the largest agricultural enterprise, we understand the needs of your business and continue to evolve to meet industry demands. Plus, when you build a Morton building, you're backed by the strongest warranty in the business. To learn more about the Morton Advantage, visit mortonbuildings.com. Get what you want and nothing else when you order a la carte internet from Wabash Communications. Wabash Communications is now able to offer a la carte internet called broadband only with fast download and upload speeds, reliable service, and unlimited data usage. No phone service is required for our broadband only plans. Our broadband only menu includes packages up to one gig download. Call us at 665-3311 now to order. Service availability and internet speed will depend on location. Contact us for details. When you want an honest deal and hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LamonsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at BruceD at Wabash.net if you are a member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Hey, thanks for watching. Hello folks, welcome back. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey here on Wabash Catch TV talking uh, this uh, morning with, with Kevin Bowen. He is the uh, high school basketball coach and high school principal at Sisney High School. And uh, we were talking about last year's basketball team. Uh, you were, your team was so young last year with uh, starting so many um, freshmen and sophomores, Kevin, uh, last year. Is it like with, with over the year, and that's kind of the time when kids. That's kind of the time when kids get their growth spurts. That's kind of when they start maturing. They start uh, filling out, uh, for want of a better term, getting bigger body, yeah, getting into the yeah. bodies. Is that is it like you have a brand new team this year? Um, I think I think so. And as far as the physical part of this, I think mentally we're going to be a lot, lot, lot tougher. Really, uh, I think our confidence levels higher, and, and you know how that is. As you get older, the, the higher in the pecking order the, at the yeah. school. You tend to get a little more confidence, and yeah. not in a bad way. But so I even if you're, gonna... so even if you're a freshman starting on the school's basketball team, you still might get thrown in the bushes as as a, <laughs> as a hazed or something like that. Well, you know, that doesn't well, give you any. Being a starter as a freshman doesn't give any street cred, Kevin. 
you know, a little bit. It wasn't back in my day. It's just part <laughs> of the, you know how that is. It's changed a little bit. We, yeah, we don't, yeah. uh, you know, we don't do bushes. that anymore. We don't. There's no hazing anymore. No, so I understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clear that up right now. Clarifying that. He just wanted to make sure. All right. All principal right. side of it. <laughs> the principal speaks <laughs> up. <laughs> but the kids, the, the kids, like I said, like I'm asking, they're they're going to come in with a with a. With a whole new set of expectations, yeah. too, I guess, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, those excuses. Mindset. That, the, the excuses that you, well, they're just freshmen and sophomore, you know. Well, not anymore. We're not freshmen yeah. and sophomore anymore, so it's, it's hopefully we're not making the same mistakes that we were making do a the year boy, ago. Do the boys recognize it? Oh, I think so. I think so. I think they're, they're eager to uh, get back out and have another opportunity. Yeah, that, uh, well, uh, all right, so last year's squad went uh, 9 and 17. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of those games, you know, the 17 losses, you were in a ton of those games toward the end. And and, yeah. and, well, and I guess my, my, my question is the experience of having been in so many close, tight games, that's got to help the kids too, right? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, our biggest, you know, we watched film and, and, and t- would talk about things last year. And the biggest thing, we had about three minutes stretch where we were terrible. Yeah. We were terrible. And, and it was almost – Every game you would, you, you'd, like, hit a, you'd, you'd hit. You there's it, not enough timeouts. There, you can't. You can't throw water on the floor to get it. Out. There's <laughs> nothing you can do to stop it. They just have to play through those things, and and that's what we're hopeful this year is a year older. We've played through that. That we're not going to have those dry spells. And a lot of times it was offensively. We just we would just have some some bonehead plays offensively, and it just snowballed. When you have young kids that don't have a lot of confidence, you know, one guy makes. St- Throws one in the crowd, then the next guy throws one in the crowd, and then, and then you. Can't. It's just easier. It's 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 more difficult to stem the tide yeah. of momentum, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, and uh, so this year, those close games, you're planning on winning, I guess. Well, well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if if I wasn't doing that, I wouldn't be doing this. I'm sure, right? That's, you know, it's uh, you know, you go, I go in every game, and and people probably think I'm crazy, and I tell the kids this. And, and I think sometimes the, the kids may have this approach that they, they don't think they can win. Yeah. And I think because they they they're I mean they're out there on uh, in the pregame and they see the size of the yeah. other kids and, sometimes. And I tell them that you know there was never a game that I walked into as a player that I thought we were going to we were going to lose. Yeah. I, I just that wasn't a mindset that that you know and, and we didn't have the most talented team. Uh, played against teams that are way more athletic than right. we were back in the South Seven in the nineties. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we still I mean we won twenty games, won a regional and. and it's just you expected to win, and, and that's kind of what we're hoping uh, that. that the, how do you get that mentality. mindset to? How do you? How, how, do, how are you able to uh, get that mindset to the kids to you to a, to a fifteen, sixteen year old? You have to win. Yeah, I mean, and that's. It seems like it's that simple. I wish it was that simple, but you have to experience some success. Uh, you know, we had a stretch where we were playing pretty well last year, and you could just see it the way we practice. It was just those two or three games in a row. Just man, it was the confidence we were playing with, and uh, you have you have to have some some experience winning. But but it's the same thing you're doing every day. You have repetitions have got to you've yeah. got to do things over and over again to where you know you put them in pressure situations where you know you're performing in practice and you're not turning the ball over, you're not throwing the bleachers, and that's just a habit that you've developed that you're not going to do in the games. As your bigs are getting older, the, uh, are, are they? Uh, you've got you've got you've got some good size this year. Let's talk. Oh, I tell you what we'll do. Let's uh, take one uh, another quick break, and we're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about the roster uh, because you've got a lot of a lot of experience coming back, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as well as some of the new blood coming in to to uh, the Sisney Running Lions. Guest today is uh, Kevin Bowen. He is the high school basketball coach at Sisney as well as the principal at Sisney High School, and we'll be back here in just after these words. Back in a sec. At Wabash Communications, our goal is simple, to keep people connected. And today we are doing just that, better than ever, by delivering the latest technology and personal service only a local provider can offer. We offer services anywhere from fast, reliable internet, TV services, and home monitoring solutions to crystal clear local and long distance phone service. Wabash continues the commitment we started back in 1952, delivering a great connection to the most important people we know, our customers. So choose Wabash, the local service from people you can trust. 
When you want an honest deal and hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LamontsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at Bruce D at Wabash.net if you are a member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Hey, thanks for watching. Looking to build a new hobby building, horse barn, or farm shop? Let Morton Buildings help you design and construct a building that perfectly suits your needs. We'll be there for you every step of the way, even post-construction. With the strongest non-prorated warranty in the industry, Plus, Morton's exclusive Energy Performer Insulation System provides the ultimate in comfort and efficiency. To see our latest projects and learn more, please visit mortonbuildings.com. Get what you want and nothing else when you order a la carte internet from Wabash Communications. Wabash Communications is now able to offer a la carte internet called broadband only with fast download and upload speeds, reliable service, and unlimited data usage. No phone service is required for our broadband only plans. Our broadband only menu includes packages up to one gig download. Call us at 665-3311 now to order. Service availability and internet speed will depend on location. Contact us for details. That makes sense, I guess. Make, makes sense that I'm not paying attention is what that is. That was well, a lot to, lot to, uh, lot to keep, keep up on. There you go. Well, welcome back, folks. You're watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey here on Wabash Catch TV. Uh, today, our guest is Kevin Bowen. He's the uh, Sisney High School basketball coach, and uh, their season starts. What's the big day? 25th. 25th uh, November our first game. 20, so you're a, it's a pre Thanksgiving. Yeah, we got uh, Red Hill. We used to play Red Hill. In, in February, we'd go to Woodlawn and turn around and go to Red Hill on the next night. That was a, that was a Friday, Saturday Friday, deal, Saturday, wasn't it? Yep, and uh, had an opportunity to move it. It worked better with their schedule because I think they were in their LIC tournament and they could play on that Saturday. So we had a couple times where it was just not – Just I think they played – I think a couple times they played in the LIC tournament and then turned around and played us that night. Yeah. So we had an opportunity to move it. We you know used to be in the Grayville tournament. Sure. We got out of that when they shut that down. Um, so we moved uh, Red Hill to that game that first Monday. Okay. Last yeah, the, year. Okay, yeah, the Grayville tournament was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Correct. Friday, Saturday yep. of that first week. Okay. All right. So now you've got you've got Red Hill on the right. first day. And that means Red Hill's getting to play before they uh, play in the Capital Classic mm -hmm. that weekend. Yeah, okay. it works. It's a good, good situation for both of us. Are you playing somewhere uh, over Thanksgiving then? We are playing uh, in Neoga for just two games. Just a Saturday oh, really? deal. Um, they they had contacted us a while back and uh, thought they had some more teams set up to play a few more games. Uh, didn't work out, so uh, we're going to go up there and play two games on Saturday, which is great. Who are you and, picking up? Uh, Neoga and then Arthur Christian. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, so I uh, don't know hardly anything about them. So you know, it's, it's, that's okay. It's going to be right. a new experience yes, for it, everybody. It, it will. It will. <laughs> So uh, we're we're looking forward to it though. All right, we'll get to the rest of the schedule here in just a little bit. We were I, I promised everybody we'd talk about the roster. You have you have what I gotta I, I gotta tell you a, a quite a variance in size. Is yeah. that is that is that uh, correctly true. put? That's true. My my guards are small. My my. Big guys, not bad. Or what? Not bad. A, you know, I'm like Good six four. Let's not say small. Height challenged. How about okay. that? All right. Well, whatever you want to call it. I mean, we're. It is what it is. On the program, <laughs> it'll be five four and five six. 
Probably. Probably. probably Thereabouts. They haven't, you haven't met. By the way, I will ask you this as a coach. And so well, before we get to the roster, you've been putting together rosters for the last thousand years. Mm-hmm. We'll call it. Do you measure kids or do you, do you, do you eye them for roster? How exactly does roster construction work and how much do you hide as a coach? Well, I, I, now, now, we're oh, really I wouldn't be asking to, the question if I didn't want a real resp- yeah, true we response. Have, we have a spot that, that I've got a chart and they sure. can stand up to and they, they measure it. Now, sometimes if I need to turn a roster around pretty quickly, it's an, it's an eyeball test. I'm like, I don't think it's about <laughs> this. And they're a little bit, you know, I, I kind of go off from how, how tall I yeah. am and then I kind of go yeah. measure it up a little bit. So sometimes it's very accurate, sometimes it's not as accurate. <laughs> I'll just be an you know, honest answer. That's, no, that's, that's well, yeah, that's exactly. Uh, well, you know, but that's the thing. That I, that's what I've always thought. I've always thought the the there. Uh, you know, it's it's it kind of depends. So there are some coaches who who are uh, devout to uh, to uh, putting. You know, they'll put a height on there. Mm-hmm. Not very many, uh, and who then that are correct heights. There are many coaches, many more coaches, and I'm not saying you're one of them. I'm saying that sometimes you are, sometimes you're not, is I guess what I'm saying. There are many more coaches who might fudge a uh, little bit. Uh, not intentionally. If I if, if I do, it's not it's not intentionally because you didn't look the proof, down. The proof is in the pudding. When That's we show exactly up, you're right. you're going to see what, what we have. And and I've scouted. You know, if I, I look at this and I'm like, oh, that guy's six six. He's about six three. I mean, yeah. So you, yeah, you, you'll, you'll see that. You know that. If you'll you prepare, see that. You're going to know. I think actually. I got to tell you, I think actually you'll see that a little bit more often at uh, Class 1A kids mm-hmm. than when you're playing a Class 2A kid. But, but you'll see fudging yeah. pretty much wherever you go. It, it, but but the three-inch fudge does occasionally happen. Yeah, it does happen every <laughs> once in a while. Every once in a while. Okay, so uh, so the, the your guards, but the, the thing is, even though they are diminutive in size these kids play hard tell me about your guards yeah they do uh you know jace Hatcher, hatcher's a junior um has, has started off and on since he's you know been a freshman mm-hmm. uh he competes uh one of probably one of our toughest kids uh, would run into a brick wall yeah uh, does what i ask him to do um and uh just he's he's fun to coach because he's you know there's some kids that kind of have that that little that fire, a extra oomph, don't yeah, they? and they, you know, you're going to get everything he's got. Yeah, you know, he, he's going to make some mistakes, but you're going to get everything he got. Uh, so it's it's fun to coach those guys. Sure, uh, you know, Jesse's our point guard. Uh, Jesse Milner. Jesse Milner, who's who's a sophomore, uh, does does a great job of handling basketball. Uh, looked to score a little bit some last year too, and that's going to be something we ask him to do a little bit more this year is, is to score some. Do you? Uh, is it is it something that uh, the the and not just uh, Jesse, but with uh, other players, whenever you ask them to run the point, you, will you see them occasionally just take the opportunity to score, or, or, or is it something that you have to ask a kid to do instead of dish? You know, it's something that we talk to Jesse about. You know, hey, you got to look to get your shot every once in a while. Yeah. You know, you can't just be a, a pass only guard right. because, you know, with this quickness, they're just going to step off of, they're not going to guard him. They're going right. to play the drive, and then he's going to have to hit some shots. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things. And he, do, he does a pretty good job of recognizing those times when he needs to get to the basket and score, pull up and take one. Uh, and that's, I think we'll see that even and more he's one this of the year. Kid, and he's one of the kids who've grown a little bit over yeah. the course of the last yeah. year. Yeah, uh, I had Brendan Potter, who's another one of our guards. Uh, shoots the ball from the perimeter very well. Uh, can get to the basket. He, he just lacks the confidence to get there sometimes. You know, we're, we're all the time encouraged. Hey, you got to get to the basket. You gotta get to the basket because uh, he shoots well from the free throw line. But he's got to get there. Yeah. Uh, so you know, expecting some big the, things. Yeah, who's a junior? And, and the way junior. and the, the way to get to the bat to the free throw line is you you drive to the basket and get fouled. Yep. That because you're not you're not going to get there for the most part just sitting out there shooting a jumper because no. you you're finding yourself open to yep. shoot a jumper. You're, hopefully, you're exactly right. Yeah. Uh, and and then we have uh, Connor Brack, who's our uh, returning, I guess, center. Uh, you know, he he was all conference player last year. I was going to say I thought Connor uh, received some uh, uh, he did. some commendation. He, did. he, he uh, averaged. Uh, pretty close to a double double um, this year or this past year for us. Um, and uh, he's he's, uh, a, he's just a junior, right? He's just a junior. Yep, just a junior. And uh, he hard nosed competitor works his tail off. Um, and uh, you know, looking forward to seeing him have some uh, you know a lot of success built on from last year. Sure. And then have another sophomore uh, that started for us last year, uh, Gavin Featherling. Um, About half the year, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He came on late. Yeah, uh, early. You know. Uh, and and has really, uh, I think, 
we're going to see a big jump in, in his production, uh, his confidence level. It's one of those things we were talking about earlier. With their, you know, a year older, your confidence level. I, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, Coach, and this is uh, kind of. Uh, it leads into it leads into what your what your how you uh, your uh, what you think about different sports. I think baseball really boosted uh, Gavin Featherling's yeah. uh, confidence oh, yeah. a lot because he had a good year uh, mm-hmm. last season last mm-hmm. year, and then he had a pretty solid uh, fall. Had this good year. had good fall and. and you know, came in and pitched well against Woodlawn, who's you know one of the better opponents yeah. we play, and I think that that just gives you a shot in the arm. So, uh, yeah, oh yeah, and that's why I encourage these kids to play. Yeah, other there was, sports. I didn't know your philosophy on oh, that. I kind of oh, figured gosh. that was what no, it was. No, no, oh, it's it's play all you can play. I mean, yeah. uh, and of course we grew up in a time where that's what you did. You yeah, played everything you could, you and this specialized Chip Hilton novels were crying out loud. The specialized. Uh, stuff is i'm not a fan of it i yeah. think it's great to give your body a break from that same repetitive movements yeah uh i think it's good plus in small schools we need all of our athletes playing all the sports yeah that's that, that makes some sense uh, all right so i think I, I just i just noticed on gavin i thought yeah. it really helped him who else you got uh then preston roberts is a a senior uh who we're expecting to be you know kind of one of those role players that come in you know rebound guard you uh, and take care of the basketball for us and, and keep us in our offense and, and he has a chance to hit some shots or get yeah. some stick backs. I mean, that's going to be great. Uh, and, you know, these these next guys have zero varsity experience. So we have our first five guys that, that have, you know, started a little bit last year and have an opportunity to start this year with a ton of varsity experience. And then, then my next four guys have zero. That, <laughs> that's kind of tough. <laughs> that, 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 that takes a zero varsity to play JV last yeah. year? Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, that's yeah. good. At least have you got basketball that. experience, but, but not – and that's a different beast. You know, varsity basketball sure. is really different. Sure, sure. Uh, speaking of that, oh, yeah, give me the other boys. Um, Terrence Martinez, a uh, sophomore, uh, will be expected to play some minutes. You know, t- another tough kid. Yeah. Uh, Dawson Harris. Uh, and then um, the uh, Aiden uh, Nettleton. Uh, another sophomore, uh, so uh, several sophomores, that's big fun. sophomore class. That's fun where you get the the chance to uh, see these kids improve, and you, one of them might turn into like a, a score yeah. uh, out, out of nowhere or something, right? Well, Potential. Hope so. Hope so. Hope you, so. Know, you know, the, you know, the biggest thing is, is to understand their role and be a varsity contributor, and uh, you know, that's the. You know they'll have the opportunity to play some JV minutes. That's where you get some confidence in scoring. You yeah. know, we talked about that to where you know it's kind of a different game you play at the varsity level. You know, I've seen kids that that uh, you know struggled at the JV level trying to be the guy, but have come into a varsity s- situation where they just you know the pressure's not there. All they've got to do is blend is, into is, a is, role and blend in and do a great job. Yeah. So I, that's what I'm looking forward to these guys. How are your numbers? How, how, about 14. The 14. That's pretty close. See, that to, seems like about like last year too. Very right? close. We think we're finishing yeah, you're, 13 you'd last year. a little year. bit more comfortable with another half a dozen like kids. 16, or 17 would be great. Yeah. That would be a you know a really good number. But but you know we talked about our size of the school a little bit earlier. I don't know if it was just off the air, but you know we're about at 118. Well, 100, yeah, 118 so, kids. You know there, there's about close to 10 percent. You know it's it's that's pretty good. Well, you're looking at 20, 25 percent of the boys. Yeah, uh, yeah. probably. Uh, what's the? Uh, how's the summer been for for, for these kids? Uh, do they, do any? Do you have any? Did you have any like um, prescribed or uh, or is it all really loose? Did you go to any tournaments and that kind um, of stuff? We we played. Uh, we I didn't know. I, didn't I have know a different how. philosophy. Okay, tell I, me your philosophy. I, I want them in the gym to work on skills and to yeah. get stronger. If we play a handful of games, that's great. Um, but I want them to be there for those times in the morning. And I, and I try to make it convenient in the morning where they can get there. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them have jobs. Yeah, sure. Of them, some of them like to play baseball. Sure. Um, so I, I want them I want them to be there in the mornings. Uh, I, I don't think that unless we develop their skill, the games aren't going to matter. Well, look. See now that makes sense, um, and, and and that's you know I've you know I, and it's kind of against the the mindset of today. You know, there's a ton of games played out there, and and that's great. You know, that's that's someone's philosophy, but but I, I've always kind of been, uh, and I've probably scaled that back a little bit. Um, you know, from when I was when I first started out. But what I've seen is, you know, we can play X amount of games in the summer, but if we don't correct anything that we're doing wrong it's not going to get any better that was the interesting thing talking to coach lieb i don't think this made the air either uh, i had uh, coach lieb on last week was uh, uh, from flora is that you know hey it's fun for the kids to play summer games that they're having a good time 
they sure as heck aren't learning defense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and that's that's the thing that kids maybe don't think about as much as coaches do. That's half the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is. You know, those those little things that that we we keeps us up at night. Uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. They're not thinking about that, which is good for them. They're yeah. just... <laughs> well, they're, 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 it's summertime. It's yeah. for fun. Yeah. It's summertime. Yeah. It's for fun. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back. We're going to talk about the MTC, who's looking good, and who and uh, how, uh, how the MTC might end up shaking out this year, as well as a wonderful opportunity for you to go on a nice trip. How's that sound? Yeah, sounds great. That sounds like a that sounds like they a good trip. trip coming up. I need a trip. You need a trip. <laughs> a nice trip to Indianapolis. Oh, yeah, that's that'd be a great one. We'll be right back after this. Do stick around. When you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LamontsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Get what you want and nothing else when you order a la carte internet from Wabash Communications. Wabash Communications is now able to offer a la carte internet called broadband only with fast download and upload speeds, reliable service, and unlimited data usage. No phone service is required for our broadband only plans. Our broadband only menu includes packages up to one gig download. Call us at 665-3311 now to order. Service availability and internet speed will depend on location. Contact us for details. Hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at Bruce D at Wabash.net if you are a member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970. Big talk with Bruce Dickey. Hey, thanks for watching. At Wabash Communications, our goal is simple, to keep people connected. And today we are doing just that, better than ever, by delivering the latest technology and personal service only a local provider can offer. We offer services anywhere from fast, reliable internet, TV services, and home monitoring solutions to crystal clear local and long distance phone service. Wabash continues the commitment we started back in 1952, delivering a great connection to the most important people we know, our customers. So choose Wabash, the local service from people you can trust. In 1949, Morton Buildings constructed our first machine storage building to establish our bond with the farming community. Since then, our relationship has grown, and so have our product offerings. From the smallest specialized operation to the largest agricultural enterprise, we understand the needs of your business and continue to evolve to meet industry demands. Plus, when you build a Morton building, you're backed by the strongest warranty in the business. To learn more about the Morton Advantage, visit mortonbuildings.com. Come on up. There I go. There you go. Welcome back, folks. You're watching Big Talk with Bruce Sticky here on Wabash Catch TV. Kevin Bowen is here. He's the, the uh, Sisney High School boys basketball coach as well as the principal at Sisney High School. And uh, uh, we are talking about a wide variety, I, I guess, at a school the size of Sisney. Um, you have to wear many hats, don't you? Yes. Yeah, there's... there's uh definitely a lot of things that we do there's times not i mean, I mean the, it's not too often whenever you're at a principal's meeting you're talking coaching basketball with any other principals or yeah. when you're at a coach's meeting that you're talking hey by the way you're a peer principal or something yeah. not a lot i mean that are there, a few? there are a few uh wade thomas uh, helps out a bit okay uh, i didn't yeah. realize wade was principal yeah. down there uh, uh he's i think he's a 
don't know if he's, he's the Ron's president. assistant, the coach. Yes. Right? Yeah. 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 I believe he's yeah. assistant for yeah. for Wine Miller. So that's it. Doesn't happen a lot. It no, really no. That's that's probably for John Bowles did it for a while at uh, Salem. Oh, I get that is correct. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. correct. Before he yeah, before he that's got right. out. That's where I started out, by the way, in, at Salem. How long were you at Salem? Four years. A student taught there and, and coached four years there and a student taught. So you t- you coached with John Bowles? Yeah, yeah, he was head coach. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, who's all right? Let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the MTC. Okay. If you ask about if you ask anybody in Southern Illinois about the Midland Trail Conference uh, over the past ten years, fifteen years, mm-hmm. at least since the the, the, the merge, uh, at least since the merge, um, it's Woodlawn's conference. Yeah. Yeah, is, is it still? How long will that last? Well, hopefully, not very long. Not till this year. <laughs> it has been till now. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be, they're load they're a load they're a load again this year. And you know, I think, um, you know, you would think. You know, we talked about cycles in small schools yeah. uh, that that a cycle would come when they're not going to be as strong. And I think that may be coming. Looking at some of the the grade school stuff and and. Uh, you know, I don't know that they, but but you know, kids mature. And they got kids they coming back. Changed, uh, I mean, yeah, they were pretty solid yeah. last year. Yeah, they've got a they've got a slew coming back. They're they're going to be really good. They're they are really going to be good. tough. Yeah, they're really good again this year, uh, and and it's you know, Wayne City is is going to be really good. Jim uh, Corona making his second oh, year yeah. there. Yeah, Jim's a great guy. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's they're going to be back. Uh, and playing well, they've got a, a move in from Weber. Uh, oh, have they? That's the Taylor kid. They're, oh, did Taylor, he? They're, Weber's arguably you know their best player last year. Yeah, uh, moved back to I think he's from Wayne State originally. I'm not yeah. positive on that, but but he's back playing for him again. So that's okay. going to definitely six four athletic and, and can score. So uh, that's definitely going to help Wayne City. Odin's going to be good again. Odin, um, you know that that's the trickiest place to play. Oh, it's tough to play. It is well. It's it's there. tough to broadcast from there mm-hmm. because you can't see, and uh, and it's just it's like you're well. Uh, I I guess it's the same on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. You can't see either. Yeah. Have they? When are they going to fix the lights? The lights have changed. They have they the changed the lights? Yep. yep. Since they when? finished it last year. Okay. Well, I haven't seen that then. Yep. They're uh, back. So that, that is that does help a ton. Well, they hosted a regional, I think, last year. Oh, did they? I think they probably did. wouldn't let them host it with the old lights. I'll bet. I don't know. The floor, there. The floor is the same. It's still very dark. It had to be. <laughs> no, the lighting. And that's got to be when you talk about Odin's gym as well. I mean, you can say the same thing about Sisney's. You've got a great home home advantage. Yeah, we do with your gym with your floor anyway. Right, it is. Uh, but actually, the teams I've had, we we play better on the road sometimes. So is we, that right? Because of space. Yeah. And offensively, you know, for you know, for our team we have right now. It, Space is good for Jesse uh, to be able to penetrate. Oh, I guess that's right. Spread things out, and, yeah. and, and that you know we don't have as much space at our place. Whereas if you had more bigs, more bigs, uh, if you need, had uh, three of the Brock boys, you might be yeah. able to uh, run to, the flex. You know, Gary Shirley used to run the flex South yeah. Central, and, yeah. and, and he he maximized his space and, and uh, did a great job of running offense in a small area. And, and a flex offense would be great in my space here. So Odin's going to be strong. Mm-hmm. Um, you're looking how, how's Grayville? How's uh, Coach Hucker going to have? Uh, well, this year? He, he's not coaching this year. Oh, was he out? Yep, he's did out. He, did he leave? I'll be darned. Uh, I didn't realize. Didn't hear yep. that. Um, Who's coaching down there? I'm not sure. I I'll have to look it up. I don't who got the uh, the job. Um, uh, you see, I did my sure homework. That. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, Christ the Rock will be better. We both did our homework. Yeah. Neither was not his coach. Well, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, some of these smaller schools have had a lot of turnover in yeah. coaches and athletic directors. Because yeah. a lot of times, you know, you come to a smaller school for a little bit so you can get a job at a bigger place. Well, that's kind of how – that's kind of what it was at uh, Wayne City for, mm-hmm. for, for several years yeah. there in a row. They're like, after Russ left, Russ was mm-hmm. there for such a long time, and uh, then he's he's uh, back at uh, Albion. But uh, but once he left, they went through three or four coaches yeah. in three or four years. Yeah, right. And right. that, that's, that's, that's tough. It is very tough. It's tough to get consistency with your kids, and, and, and uh, it's just – it's uh, just not good. I mean, consistency is um, good for high school Other kids. conference, uh, Sandoval still struggling. They had a tough year last they year. Had a tough year last year, and I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I know they were they were young, uh, so you know, obviously they'll probably be better than they were last year. Yeah, uh, so. we didn't mention the other two W's, Waltonville and Weber. Yep, um, I think Weber uh, they got a move in, or a, they got a foreign. They got a new student. gymnasium. Yes, and they got a foreign exchange student. I've heard it's it's a pretty good little play. Oh, was that right? Yeah. 
Uh, so it'll be interesting to see that. I think they'll be uh, they'll be all right. Of course, they lost the Taylor kit, so that'll hurt them some. But uh, I think they'll be. Uh, Coach Betty does a good job over there. So you'll, uh, you'll, Waltonville, you'll be yeah. able, Waltonville, I think they graduated a couple kids, but they should be pretty solid. Um, one of the uh, one of the early highlights of the season to me is the uh, Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament. You get a chance, you'll get a chance to see some of the teams you'll see later in the conference, uh, but you also get a, you'll, you'll play North Clay and a few other teams yeah. possibly over the, in that a, tournament. It's 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 good. I mean, you know, it's been so good for so many years. Yeah, uh, it's, it's just a solid tournament for us. And I, you know, when I first came to Sisney, I didn't like the pre Christmas tournament. I, I grew up at the Central Holiday Tournament, right. and that's what you did. You had Christmas, and then you went. And, right. Right. Three days of basketball, and yeah. it was wonderful. Uh, but after my first couple of years, you know, I thought, you know what? This is kind of nice. It's kind of nice. Uh, you know, I started having – we had, you know, a couple of kids, and, and, you know, we had time to spend with that. And then I'd go scout. Well, yeah. And, and I, I did a lot of my scouting during this time. Let you have open gym over the holidays yeah. as opposed to, uh, all right, I've been kind of putting it off, and I'm, I'm running out of time. I can't do it anymore. What? Tell me about this big trip to Indianapolis. Um we did done a few this years ago, right? Yeah, we did. We did a couple years ago. Yeah. Uh, these guys were actually freshmen. Okay. Uh, uh, Brack and the, those guys were freshmen. We did this last. Uh, we play at uh, the Pacers. Uh, Baker's before, Life before, Fieldhouse. Uh, yes, before a uh, a game. Uh, and this is a and this is a full full blown game that will count you, on your schedule and everything. Yep, they give you two hours basically of gym time, uh, and then you have to have the varsity game done in that time frame. Okay, so no it's JV. Well, here's what you get: two hours. So what we do is we play a, a regular varsity basketball game. Oh, I see. And then any extra time, however that time much that time is, the JV play. You oh, know, that's a, pretty cool. A, a, grand, a game during that time, and it's it is a great great opportunity. Uh, Indiana is they're they're wonderful to us. They treat us really well. Um, actually, a long time ago, we did this with Chicago. Oh, really? And and we went up there one time, and you know, I can see them not, not being, a great. It was not a great experience. I can, I, you know, anybody I've ever talked to who've had to deal with the uh, United Center is always, well, you know, it's it, it could be a lot better. Let's put it that way. And and so I heard that any. Indiana did this, and uh, so we uh, contacted the Pacers several years ago, um, and we've done this probably four or five times now. Oh, really? Uh, and it's just a it's a great experience for kids. Usually, bringing a school over from Illinois, I'm surprised you've got a school from Indiana uh, well, with you this time. Had difficulties the last few times we've done this, getting a team that wanted to do that, wanted to give up a home game, yeah. or, or vice versa. So uh, when I talked to him two years ago, I said, "Hey, you know, if you guys have a team and want to match us up." We we play a lot of the teams already, so it would yeah. be a great great opportunity. So they did, and I talked to him again this time. I said, you know, just match us up with someone similar size. Who are you playing? Um, playing team. At, uh, where's that there? <laughs> um, Central Christian. Central Christian. Up around the Indianapolis area. Okay. Uh, they played a lot of teams around the Evansville area. Yeah. Uh, I know um, – Evansville Day School is the team they played last year. Team we used to play on schedule. And they were uh, in the Grayville tournament. Yeah, yeah. So um, interested to see. Uh, I think they're going to be pretty good. What I saw from last year's notes, I kind of stalked them already. How do folks? Okay, how how do folks get tickets for this? Um, we, and, and it's January second, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, contact myself at the high school. There's a flyer I'll have out around town. They, obviously, the players have flyers, uh, and and then the tickets will go through me, uh, and I'll make one order. Uh, just it simplifies things. And okay. I can get tickets set up. So I, so I can't get else? tickets. Uh, I, I can't get tickets uh, like on the court to ha har harass the uh, the well, Nuggets. If you you well, get you, the you, ticket counts for the Nuggets Pacers game too. They give us three options of three different levels of tickets. You know, and and none of the tickets are close to the floor. Oh, okay. Uh, but it's 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 kind of a it's a Baker's Life Field Hall, so you can't great get a bad seat. seat. It's great, great seats. Seat. Kevin, I've run out of time. Okay. Well, did I, I feel I feel terrible. Uh, we were done. I want you to get me on the floor and, and, and in the Pacers outfit. Well, hey, you know what? I can probably, you can announce. <laughs> Maybe not for the Pacers game, but I mean, you, can, you can do it for us. Hey, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> Kevin, that's Kevin Bowen. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate well, thanks, it. Best of luck to the running Lions this right. year, okay? You. We've got you several times. Right. Uh, folks, thanks very much for tuning in to Big Talk with Bruce Dickey here on Wabash Catch TV. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.